This guy again with his fake jaw. And Thanos up there. Do you see his. His. Uh, he had a bunch of. It might have been rings, yeah. <laughs> this guy can't catch a break from Vi, can he? It's just every time. So she's become a boxer now, and Mutton Shops is helping her out. I mean, she's always had the hands, hasn't hadn't she? <laughs> Her makeup is covering up her Vi tattoo when she does that sometimes. Yeah, still thinking of Kay, of course. Oh, and Jinx being in there, yeah, of course. <laughs> the, the kind of flashing in a nightclub like that and someone appearing <laughs> is who had me of after sun. <laughs> She actually here this time. Out of your mouth. <coughs> it's Vander. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's alive. Ooh, her tears are pink. I mean, I know her eyes are, yeah, all messed up from shimmer and stuff. He needs our help. I can prove it. As you gonna be working together? I mean, for dad, of course. And yeah, had Echo reversing time a little bit there. Look at that. I heard that um, his power in the game is he can like reverse time like four seconds at a time. Yeah, of course. Carnage. Ooh. Yeah, like sensing the shadow of it. Is that somehow related to a type of power she would have in a game? She can almost sense what's happened, yeah. Months of peacekeeping occupation. Countless operations. Peace. Peacekeeping. The beast came for you. It was summoned by you. Oh, so it never actually took Singe back to, um, took to safety. Ooh, we've heard that tune. How was Jinx involved? Yeah, this isn't some greater conspiracy, it's just he unleashed it. Oh, nice, yeah, seeing where Mel showed up. Oh, yeah, look at her skin, the really like exaggerated the different color tones there to make her look kind of sickly almost. Yeah, you can see how many more kind of green patches there are. Oh, seeing someone chained up. Oh, was that? Yeah, yeah. Because she was being controlled, that makes sense. Where exactly has that taken her? Is she just ages away in a distant land? Alora was there. And then. Oh, yeah, okay. Step into the light. Kino. Her brother. <laughs> yeah, cause her brother was assumed dead by Ambessa. He's got one hell of a chin, Giga Chad. <laughs> I'd hope they'd never come for you. So he's not actually dead, he was captured. Hmm. Oh, Vanda there as well. Symbols of hope and freedom with the birds. This is where I lost him. Yeah, lost control. I can't tell if it's just because Vi isn't looking straight 
on camera, but it looks like her nose might be a little crooked from all her boxing. Is it? I can't quite tell. <laughs> cool, huh? Not even toxic. Hmm. Well, pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's unhinged enough to not care. <laughs> when are you gonna admit that this is just another one of your fantasies? Or do you not want the kid to know how delusional you are? <laughs> she hasn't explained that he's part beast. Or mostly beast. Throw him with the pilty goons who murdered mom and dad. Mm. Well, at least they never had to see the psycho their daughter turned into. Which one? <laughs> you think I need these to. <gasps> she didn't even. <laughs> one second. Yeah, didn't even have time to react. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, but she did duck under the punch. I should will break them up here, yeah. Oh, yeah, don't be too rough on her. Still got all your insights? I'm glad that wasn't made into a bigger thing. <laughs> Jinx didn't react majorly bad to that. You don't actually need my help. You haven't for a long time. Yeah, she's still trying to patch it up, you know? Oh, blood. But it was only, it was only singed blood he was kind of connected to, though, I assumed. I've never seen a beast of such savagery. No beast is more savage than man. Hmm. <laughs> you will serve me. My enemies will be yours. Your weapons will be mine. Oh, yeah. She can weaponize Vander, of course. He had a ferocious will to live. An incredible. And his will is still pushing on, yeah. I was able to make strides impossible with an Ooh, specimen. There's a flash there of someone else. But the mind. The mind I could not recover. Yeah. Mind's being fractured just like Jinx. The man forever lost in the bowels of the beast. Oh yeah, <laughs> young Silco. Compelled by the scent of blood. Hmm. Vi there, but not fully. Vi, was, Vi wasn't fully in focus there. And Silco with the damaged eye. She believes you're dead. I do like to disappoint her. Yeah, she was so disappointed in him. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Some sort of puzzle. You know to do that. I don't know. Yeah, she knew to draw out that that pattern. She passed through their hometown and fell in love. <laughs> That's <Ooh. not> <laughs> I mean, there had to be someone. I should have left it alone, but the affair. <laughs> they've got another split doctor. That's impossible. Well, they've got another sibling out there, or one of those is the child. This will allow you to locate your beast. Not precisely. Yeah, he could be cooking up anything here. The curious dismissal of a revered academy alchemist. Yeah, why was he dismissed? And no mention of his crime. Might have been his experiments with biological beings. Whose absence has always gnawed at my mind. Who invented Shem? Oh, wow. Dr. Revik. Ah, have a name, Dr. Revit. Oh, the light effects, they're lovely, yeah, the, compared to the outside. Doing experiments for someone. Keeping her alive. Precisely what are you trying to cure? Death. Oh. World that no longer need he's just trying to make her immortal. Does she not actually have anything wrong with her? And he's trying to find a cure for death. Yeah. Or we, no, she might have actually been dying. Yeah, she can see it. See, envision the patterns. These tests, deadly consequences. I deserve to know the truth. Oh. Of course. Makes you wonder why disappeared in the ripple there. I'm missing something. 
Yeah. A healthy sense of self-preservation, I'd say. Is it not actually him? Is it a figment of our imagination or something? You aren't my brother. Oh, <laughs> that's a big risk. Oh, yeah, it's not blood. It's the black rose. No. Oh, and then it's her. <laughs> that's cool. Just chained her up again. Oh, and they could just leave her in this, like, imbetwiled world. Let us to you, sister. Sister. So was it in the Black Rose land that Ambassa fell in love and had her? Ooh. Okay. And, okay, back to Vanda, yeah. Oh, the old boxing gloves, yeah. Vander and Silco. What is it? A message from Vander. To Silco. From how long ago, yeah. Anyway, you know where to find me. Blisters and Bedrock. Oh, Blisters and Bedrock again. If he found this, everything might have been different. Yeah, the falling out, the wound different. Like that, she's given the gloves a paint job. They're not as enforcer coloured now. But he's on his way as well, yeah. Oh, the music's ramping up. I don't think he's going to be friendly as he shows up. Oh. <laughs> I wonder if you'll ever see Isha and I think it's Powder, yeah. Going straight for her because of the blood. This is our first good look at him really. Ooh, damn. Wait, did that did that like split some of his jaw and it rehealed? Oh the little particles as well. Oh, and seeing the rib cages. Uh, it's more of a montage, it's hard to make out what's happening, yeah. Go on, yeah, there you go, sea powder. Fine, it's him. You have to believe me. I love the light coming off of everything, the different lighting. Oh, putting down her gloves. <laughs> Back to this song, yeah. Our love. Oh, they haven't included the lyrics. <laughs> Just the instrumental version. Crack in the earth into a thriving, healthy community became a reality. Tonight, eh? Hmm, so they were making progress. <laughs> I'm knocked up. Oh. A girl. How do you know? Mm. Name of Violet? I can't protect her from all the shit down here. And work mm. I don't have to. Oh, you got a community down here. Because yeah. I told you, I put you on the hook. <laughs> so, I, I always kind of figured Vanda, uh, it was just random kids that he found on the bridge that day, but it's, yeah, he had more responsibility there. I've always liked the name Violet. He was the name. To, he was the one to name her. Wow. Okay. What about all those mushrooms that were produced in the light? Yeah. Oh. Ah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he did recognise her. What are you waiting for? He's your dad too. Hmm. They're actually like a family again. Mm -hmm. What have you done to us? 
Oh, different colored eyes. Wow. There's gotta be something, it's too, too good. Too good to be true. Is that Victor? It's all white now. Oh, being drawn in as well. Oh no, that's Sallow. Yeah, you can see the, the peak of the blonde hair. Whoa. Okay, Jace has finally has been freed. How long has it been for him? They, they were just like, you saw a glimpse of it looked like Echo and Heimerdinger as well. But he's walking, obviously. Victor fixed him. He's these markings on his face. It's like it's like the hand where a hand would hit. You can just spe speak through him. Wow, Victor. Look, his his hammer though is so corrupted. I thought you were done with Hextech. It's not really even tech at this point, is it? It's just magic. You've given Hextech to the people? As we always promised. Yeah, that's always what he wanted to do. You seem different. Something happened. Yeah, when he was in there. You too have touched the arcane. Your mind suffered. I mean, the, the arcane has some sort of sentience itself, doesn't it? If you'll excuse me. That's almost controlling Victor a bit or influencing Victor. I'm sorry too. Oh, 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 oh. Whoa! Squashed him like a bug. Whoa! Okay, so that was Arcane Season 2, Episode 5. A lot happened this episode. We've got a lot of spinning wheels at the moment, um, a lot of back and forth. And I was just thinking, I wonder if that is kind of contributing to people's perception of the pacing as well. Because like, I feel like season one, you know, you, you did have side stories, but a lot of the episodes, there was kind of one singular focus. Whereas here, we're, we're jumping a lot around. I'd say like the main focus here was the Vanda stuff, was um, Jinx and Vi going down into the caves and finding Vanda. But there was a lot of jumping back and forth because there's so many like subplots to cover here. So starting off, Vi, I guess, you know, you use your skills to the best of your advantage. She knows she's a good fighter, so she can rack up some money there. And then Jinx comes along, you know, she was having visions of Jinx and Kate anyway, but Jinx comes along and tells her that Vanda's alive, and I don't think she quite believes it. She's just going along anyway, but we do eventually see Vi. Something in there makes her realise Vanda is in there, and she drops the gloves, and we get a great moment with the hug but with everyone. That was such a great moment. And I'm glad, you know, when Jinx and Vi were fighting and Isha got caught up in that, it, 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 they just kind of moved on and I was glad because I that, that that could have been made into a bigger deal of um you know you got the bite Vi kind of pushed Isha off and but no it, w it wasn't anything bigger you know I feel like a different Jinx would have just pulled out every weapon in the arsenal in that situation but Aisha has really helped Jinx temper down it feels like a different character almost how calm jinx is here and just how normal she is in a way but i know this isn't going to last as well and with that bit of backstory we get for silco and vanda it does kind of recontextualize the relationship that the girls have with vanda because for a long time i had assumed that he had just found the two girls you know with their dead parents and brought them in which is very noble of Vanda, and it still is noble what he's doing, but it is slightly different that they kind of already had this pact of protection that, that Silco and Vanda already had this kind of past of vowing to protect Jinx and Violent. Well, obviously they didn't know about 
Jinx slash Powder's existence at that point, but they promised to their mum that they would protect. So, so they did later on, and that does make me wonder if um, Silco knew if he ever connected the dots that this was their friend's child. Um, I'm not sure if we we got a name for Powder and. Vi's mum there but when Silk was like hello little girl in episode three it seems like he doesn't know but if he did it just makes you know what he turned Jinx into what he turned Powder into even worse the way he kind of groomed her into that life and just like he him and Vanda had this vow of protection for these kids and if he did know I mean like Either way, what he did to Jinx wasn't great, but if he did know, it's like breaking that promise as well, almost. Like, obviously, he did look after her in a way, but it's not the way it should be. And I do think um, there was a the little bit of fight between Warwick slash Vanda and Vi there. I, w I wish we had a bit more of that, that... As much as I hate to say it, that fight felt a bit slideshowy. It felt a bit Lemillion. Although there was a lot of cool imagery there, I, I, I felt like I was missing something there a little bit, maybe. Maybe that could have gone on a bit longer. We could have seen a bit more of it. And even I felt like we could have seen a little bit more of Vi at the start in her like boxing career as well, you know. Again, it's a, a little bit of pacing. Um, I know people, I've seen people say that the show could have done with like another episode one more episode to help out the pacing i'm not sure if i feel that way obviously i'll see once i've seen all of the episodes but i feel like maybe not an extra episode but maybe just another 10 minutes on top of each episode could have been good you know just to flesh out things a bit because like we saw um mutton chops there with vi in the boxing thing he was like helping her out but he never even says a word. We just have that montage and then we move on from that concept of her being in there and doing all of that fighting, you know? And then, like, off of the Evander story, we're getting some more backstory of Singed. He was an official alchemist for... Was it alchemists they used the term? For the Piltover, for Piltover, for the council, for the city. And then he was dismissed disgracefully and... He had some sort of crime covered up. We saw, you know, he's been experimenting biologically. Maybe that's the bit of the taboo that he's breaking there. And um, we see Deckard's head just in a jar there. Um, I, I was, I saw him and I was like, oh my God, it's, God, what's his name? I just couldn't remember his name in that moment. But Deckard, I remember now, I knew it began with, I was like, is it Declan? No, that doesn't sound right. But Decker's head was in that jar and, all of this has been for his daughter there, but I'm not sure if I'm misunderstanding there. Like, they were saying, what are you trying to cure her of? of um, and he said death. And I'm just like, w was it? I, my gut instinct is that it is actually a, some sort of disease that she has. And he was just being poetic there. Um, but part of me is like, what if she is completely fine and he is just trying to, you know, invent imm immortality in some form or another and give it to her. And But then, like, there could be some cruel irony in that with what kind of life is this, this immortality that he's given her if she's just in this state, in this, like, comatose state constantly, you know? You live forever, but you never actually live. I'm not sure that that, that could be a cool concept in there, but... I'm not sure if it's that or if it's just the more basic. She does have some sort of disease that would kill her and he's just being a bit poetic when he's answering her questions there. <laughs> and of course, Ambessa sees all this devastation and wants to weaponize Vanda, wants to, you know... Of course, it makes complete sense. Um, use this as a tool, use this as a weapon. He can probably make more monsters like this. Um, so she wants to weaponize that. And then speaking of Ambessa, we obviously have all the stuff with Mel and the brother there, who isn't actually her brother. But um, it seems the Black Rose people, because the brother wasn't, I thought he was some sort of, 
imagination of Mel there, but he wasn't. He was like a construct by the Black Rose people. And he said, you know, mentioned this idea of Ambessa falling in love and having this child who is part Noxian, part of the Black Rose. And then when Mel kind of figured out what was going on, some of the voices there were saying, where is the child? That So I feel like they at least believe that child exists. The, the child probably does exist. And that's one of the things they're after. They're after this child, this, this almost connection between the Noxians and the Black Rose. At first, I wasn't sure if that was referring to Mel or referring to her brother. And then, of course, we see Mel with some sort of powers there. Her armor starts to glow. Now... I try and avoid spoilers as much as I can, but, you know, sometimes on TikTok I'd scrolled. This is after season one, before season two had even started, I was scrolling and it was someone with the final scene of season one saying, oh, what is Mel's power when her armor glows there? Because when Jinx's rocket hit, is like going in, it's almost like a kind of spider sense or something and you see her armor glow and there's maybe some sort of protection there that may have protected her from the blast. And it's obvious there, she definitely does have some sort of power because she was like glowing and her armor kind of lit up again, all of the gold bits. I don't know if that's like some sort of special material that, or is it, or if it's some sort of conduit for her power, or if it's just an effect that the show is doing because it looks so cool. But she obviously has some sort of light power or some sort of power there, so this golden power. But is that power the power that the Black Rose were after? And she is that child? Or is it the child is another sibling? Not quite sure. I'm sure we'll get some answers there eventually. And then right at the very end, we get a bit of Jason Victor. Um, something's happened to Jace because obviously, I don't know how much time it's been in the real world, but it's been enough time that he's grown a beard. And it seems like we kind of saw Heimerdinger and Echo and Jace all being like, almost like, tapped into their nervous system by the hex gate by the wild rune by the arcane um and they he's been doing something in there he's been like seeing visions because like when we saw sallow he obviously had the markings from being healed from by victor so it has been a bit of time but as well we had some kind of kind of flashes and it was almost like a flash of something demonic over him, you know? And it seems very clear to me that there's some sort of maybe sentience or some sort of will that the arcane has and that is corrupting Victor. It's like influencing Victor, giving Victor all of, the, all of this power, obviously, but Victor's like being used and converting all of these people perhaps even like building an army and as well there was i mean i can't remember his name the guy that victor initially healed that we had seen in season one a few times when he's healed he doesn't look like he looked before even his personality you know it didn't just revert him back it healed the fact that he needs glasses and even changed his hair color it was more like ginger whereas before I don't really remember it being like that. It was like changing him, changing him fundamentally maybe more than it is just reversing him back to him being like affected by the shimmer, the shimmer disease that he had. And of course, like using religion to build a following, build an army, build a cause. That seems quite evident there and quite an easy trick to pull when you've got all of this power. But then... Jace has obviously seen some shit in there because I noticed he even had like a leg brace or something there and his axe or his hammer has been completely like corrupted because his hex tech has been in there. It looks much more organic and free formed there. And he even had like in his wrist, like a bit of hex tech implanted in his wrist. Um, I don't know if, well, it, well we might find out later on if like Heimerdinger and Echo were kind of in there with him or was he like isolated they were obviously all in there but are like are they all 
being influenced differently, seeing different things, going through different things, or is it like a shared experience? And then almost out of nowhere, I don't know, Sallow is gone. <laughs> Splat. Um, whatever Jace has seen, he's very um he's very convinced and dedicated because it seems like it's going to be Jace versus Victor. They've been setting that up. There's going to be some sort of showdown there, going from best friends to falling out to enemies here. Like we've seen so many times with other characters in this show. Jace is going to be going after Victor and maybe like Victor's army that he's almost been recruiting here, it seems. The thing is, it's like they've both been influenced by the arcane, but victor's been influenced to be yeah it's like godlike jesus messiah figure what have they been using a different technique on jace because jace has come out completely different than victor obviously maybe victor was easier to manipulate jace was more cynical and didn't believe what he was seeing or they were just showing different things they're trying to get different results out of each of them individually i don't know and it depends how much kind of sentience that even is to the arcane is it like fully pulling the strings or is it just this kind of unthinking force it's just like this force that's influencing them or is it like fully sentient fully pulling the strings i'm not sure there's a few possibilities there so i hope you enjoyed this thank you for watching if you did be sure to leave a like comment your thoughts down below and if you really love this be sure to subscribe so you can keep up to date on future uploads so yeah thanks for watching catch you guys later